Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of this series where I talk about how I edit the photos that I took during my ski trip in Chamonix, France. In the second part of this series, we're going to talk about a super powerful tool, which is a clone stamp tool, the healing tool, or the content aware tool, depending on what you want to call it. This is really a tool that can make a photo that is almost perfect become perfect, so it's a really useful one to know. Let's get started by rolling the intro. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm Luc Ben Mahalford, a young photographer and filmmaker on a journey to become better at this art. I want to quickly start by reminding you that even though I'm using a MacBook Pro 16 inch and Lightroom to edit my photos, you can use whatever device you have, so it could be a phone, it could be a tablet, and you could use a completely different software like my favorite free photo editor, Polar Photo Editor. Okay, so let's jump right in here and talk about the different tools that you have for healing, clone stamping, content aware. Really, it doesn't matter what you want to call it here. So we're going to look at this first photo here. We're going to see that I applied a bunch of healing inside of the photo. This is one of my favorite shots, but I did work quite a lot to get it to this point. But let's actually go to another photo because I think I have a better example for these different types of tools. So if I look at this photo here, what I mainly did was removing the lamppost. So if I remove it here, we can see that we have two lampposts here. Uh, and I removed them just to make the image look a little bit cleaner right here. So here I'm going to reset completely the photo here and we're going to go through the different options right here. So first of all, we have Content Aware Remove. This is very similar to people that use Photoshop where it's called Content Aware Fill. So you can simply come here and then set the size here. I'm actually using my two fingers to zoom in, in and out. Little trick to change the size quickly. And then you can simply paint over what you want to disappear. Um, so here it's going to do a job and it's going to try and replace it automatically here. We see there's a little part right here that where we still have the sign, so I can come here, change the size, go through, remove it here. And this is used as an algorithm to try and find what is the best thing to replace. Here it didn't work, so in this case we can click on it, click on delete, and we can try redoing it again. And we're going to see if it works or not this time around. Um, it worked, it's not perfect. Uh, we're going to look at another tool that we have right here. So we could come here at the top right here and try removing this. But we're going to look at the second tool here, which is healing. Healing is very different uh, compared to Content Aware. Content Aware tries to do everything automatically for here. Here it is a little more of a manual process. So here, first of all, I'm going to set the size to something that can cover the lamppost right here. But we also have a feather. So if you look at the side here of your indication, you're going to see that you have a feather around, which is basically uh, where you're going to be 100% of the opacity that you're changing and something that is less. So if we select here and we just paint over this lamppost here, we're going to see that the software automatically tries and finds something that looks similar to this part. But then we can go here and we can actually play around and try and find exactly what works here and looks natural. Um, this is much better than Content Aware Fail because like I said, Content Aware Fail is automatic. It tries and find the best part for you. Where here, it does try and find the best part, but it lets you tweak it a little bit better. Peeling here is really important uh, when you're doing things on faces or things like that because it's going to take the colors and the luminosity of the things around and try and adapt what you're cloning here to be somewhat similar. Finally, the last option we have right here, so let's go here, is going to be our clone stamp tool. So if you want to come here and want to remove this last part of the post right here, we can use the clone stamp tool. And again, here it's trying to find parts of the image that could be used to replace this. Again, here it might be a little bit hard using the clone stamp tool because the clone stamp tool simply takes one part and directly applies the same image somewhere else. So if the luminosity or something like that is different, it can be hard using the clone stamp tool here to remove it. So actually I'm going to go back here and use the uh, content aware uh, replace. So we're going to come here, use this. And like you saw, another thing I've been doing here that's actually pretty important is I've been doing the whole post in different steps and using different tools. A lot of the time when you want to remove some objects, you have to do it small part by small part to completely remove the object and you have to use different tools to get the best results. Trying to remove the whole post using only one tool probably won't work. Like if you look at this here now, it actually looks pretty natural, it looks pretty good. Uh, but let's say I removed everything and only used the content aware remove it's probably not going to look that good because there's just too much for the algorithm to figure out how to replace everything. So here it doesn't look natural, it doesn't look good, it's clearly replace something. And when you replace something, you want to make sure that it looks natural as if you didn't do anything. Okay, for so saying, I don't have a fancy software like Lightroom to edit my photos. 
This is not a problem at all. I'm gonna show you how you can do it using your phone right here. So inside of Google Photos, I have an option to remove it, but there's a bunch of other software that can also do that that you can find inside of the App Store or the Play Store. So the first picture we're gonna come here is gonna look at this one. We're gonna see my sister is there. And actually Google Photos has a tool that is called uh, Magic Eraser. I think it only works on the new Pixel phones. That's a little bit sad, but it's really cool because you can simply circle something you wanna get rid of, the AI is going to detect it and you can remove somebody that easily. Again, you might have to retouch it a few times just to get good results. But you can see here that my sister completely disappeared from the picture. It's kind of crazy that if we look at before and after, um, we're going to see that she was there and then she's gone afterwards. That's kind of crazy how easy it is to do. We can look at a few other examples. I'm just going to discard the edit right here. Here, let's say we want to have only my sister at the top of the mountain here. I can come inside of edit. I can go inside of tools, magic eraser, let it analyze the scene. I can come in the back right here. I can delete everyone right here just by clicking on them. And again, there's a bunch of different apps that can do exactly the same thing I'm doing. I forgot right here, this person, done. Looks pretty good now. And my sister is now alone at the top of the mountain, which is pretty cool. Couldn't do that in the past. And this is using technology uh, to really help your pictures become better. I want to show a little bit of a more impressive example here because up to now, they were pretty easy people to remove and the backgrounds are not that yeah, hard to remove. But let's come on this one. Let's go on Magic Eraser. I actually told me that I detected there was people on the scenes that we might want to remove. And I can simply click on the different peoples here again. Here. And then nobody else in the picture. That's kind of crazy. Super easy to do. Again, there's other apps that you can use. Uh, it's not just Google that has this feature. This one is just built in inside of your phone. So definitely possible to do whatever type of device you're using to edit your photos. Now I wanna go through a few examples and talk about when you would be using these tools and why they are so powerful. So let's go back to the example I had previously and look at why I use the clone stamp tool here. So if we come here and we hide the uh, clone stamp tool, we're gonna see there's a bunch of dust spots that appeared on my sensor. And this just made this clear picture not as clean and not as good looking as it should. So I went through and using the healing tool mostly remove all of the different dots around here. Also in the bottom corner right here on the side, there was a little annoying thing. So I decided here and used, uh, I think it was the healing tool to remove that spot and just make the, click, the picture look cleaner in the end. So the first reason you wanna do this is just to make sure that your images are nice and clean and there's nothing that shouldn't be there inside of the shots. If you're wondering how to go quicker to remove all of these spots, because there was a lot right there, there's actually a tool inside of Lightroom that's pretty cool. You can click on visualize spots right here. I'm going to have to reset the edit for it to work. And then we're going to see all the little spots that appear here. So then it's super simple to simply using a healing brush. Usually I like having the feather almost completely up. And then you can simply go through and click on all the different dust spots here. And they're all going to be removed. So it takes time. It's annoying. Definitely better to clean your sensor. But I don't know why my sensor was so dirty in this picture. And I had to do this for this shot. So let's go to the next example right here. And this one right here is actually a pretty cool example. So another thing I might remove from shots is things that are created by humans. So usually there's some controversy about uh, removing some things from the pictures because it can be considered as manipulating pictures and not being true to the scene. Uh, but sometimes things that people uh, or humans add inside of the landscapes just make them look worse. So in that case, I don't really have a problem removing something that's created by a human. So for example, the example we had right here, I removed the lamppost just to make it look cleaner and a little bit less distracting. The next example right here is actually removing humans. So that's what we did with my Pixel phone. But we're also gonna do it right here because if you look at the original version here, there was a bunch of people at the bottom here and they were really distracting for the photos. I wanted to have the scale of the people here and the big mountains in the background, but I didn't want all the distraction in front here with all these little people going down the slopes. If we look at the next picture, it's very similar idea here. I cleaned up the picture. First of all, I cleaned up some of the dust spots at the top here, removed this gear at the bottom, and then removed all of the posts that we had at the bottom here. Again, just making the whole picture look a little bit cleaner in the end. If we come to the next one here, we're gonna see again, I just did a small correction here to remove a dust spot. I did that through most of the pictures. 
And now the next point is one that's much more interesting. And it's a lot of the time when you look at pictures, a very important thing to do is make sure that your edges look nice and clean and there's no distraction around the edges. So for example, in this case right here, if you look, there was a house at the bottom here and it was just a little bit distracting on that area. So I decided to clone in some trees to make them disappear and make the whole shot look better. I don't think it's my best clone stamp here, but it uh, looks good enough. A better example is this one right here. So it looks really good right this, but if we disable the uh, clone stop and healing tools right here, we're gonna see there's a bunch of little things all around the shot that I just removed to make the whole shot look better. Again, they're not big things, they're not huge things that I'm moving. They don't really change the scene in the end. So that's why I don't really feel bad about doing this. It's just getting a cleaner shot in the end. The next one here is actually very interesting. This is one of my favorite shots from that trip. Uh, but there was a very annoying rock at the bottom here. So if we remove it here, there was actually not a rock. It seemed to be just some ice and it didn't look that good. So just I cleaned it up by using the clone stamp tool, I think, or the healing tool right here and just make it cleaner. Again, there was more dust stops at the top, so I removed those two. Finally, in the last one right here, uh, again, very small thing I removed on the side here, and simply there was some um, chimney fumes or something like that, I'm not sure how they're called, that were coming out and were just distracting here. So I decided to go through and remove them just to make the picture look a little better. So you can see that most example here, they're not huge jaded, I'm not changing everything inside the picture, but using a clone stamp tool can just make the picture look simpler, it can clean up your sides, and can just improve the overall image by making these small little tweaks. It's also very important if you have some dust spots or things like that to go through and remove all of them. I passed like four or five hours going through all my picture and removing all the dust spots, so that was annoying. Uh, but this is why all of these tools are very, very important to know when you're editing your photos. Like for the other videos inside of this series, I'm gonna have a link down in the description with all of the photos in full resolution. We can compare them uh, with the original version, the version with the presets, then the clone stamping applied, and finally the masking, which will be the subject of the last video here. If you wanna get my free presets, you can go down and click on the link down in the description, and you're gonna to have to subscribe to my newsletter to get the free presets. Uh, but the newsletter is only one that I'm gonna send out every month or so. I don't really wanna be annoying with it, I just wanna give a recap. So it could be some photos from my website, it could be some content from YouTube, from Instagram, or different places, just to give a recap of what I've been up to in the last month. And sometimes if I have something cool to share, I might share a few more during the month, but really I'm gonna try and keep less emails as possible. So definitely go check out the link down in the description for the photos and also to subscribe to my list newsletter and get the free preset. If you wanna know how we use the preset, go back and listen in my previous video where I go all about how other presets, how I use them, how I create them and all of that good stuff. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know by hitting the like button below and definitely subscribe for the next episode of this series and see you in the next one.